Hi, Chef Coco here. Welcome to my kitchen. And this is going to be my first episode of um, some cooking techniques and cooking lessons for uh, the home cook. And what I'm going to make today is one of my favorite dishes. Uh, I have to say it's pretty high up there of being actually my favorite dish. Uh, it's chicken piccata. It's not a hard recipe to make. Um, and it's pretty quick and easy. Uh, what I already have here on my stove got going on. I already have my pot of water boiling, coming to a boil. And that way my pasta will be ready for when I get everything else ready. And uh, the ingredients for the chicken piccata, what I have here is I love angel hair pasta. You can get any label that you want for angel hair pasta. Um, I just prefer the store brand. No big deal. Doesn't have to be fancy. Or if you have your own pasta maker, you can make your own pasta and use the um, your hookups for your uh, pasta maker. Um, all it includes recipe is I like to use boneless chicken thighs. Because chicken thighs have more flavor and they hold in the tenderness and the juiciness better than a chicken breast does. And what I have here is all seasoned flour. And what I'm going to do is just season my flour with a little kosher, um, no, sea salt. Got some sea salt and I got some fresh ground pepper. And I'm just going to mix that up so my flour is ready. I'm going to just put my camera down here. Um, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to get a wash my hands off real quick. And get a towel out for my hands. And... What we're going to do next is I'm going to get some olive oil. I prefer using extra virgin olive oil. And I'm going to get my pan on for this. And we're going to start off by putting olive oil in the pan. And the um, other ingredients that we're going to use while I'm waiting for my pan to heat up. All this needs is your chicken. Some seasoned flour, some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I have one Myers lemon. I love the Myers lemon. You can use any lemon that you want. And even if you have lemon juice in the bottle, that's fine as well. But since you're just cooking at home, I know in the kitchens, uh, when I was working in kitchens, we did have lemon juice in the bottles and we used mostly that because we went through so much that it was just more convenient for some restaurants I worked at to use the lemon juice in the bottle. Um, but if you can, I would suggest to use just a fresh lemon. You got some white wine. I use a Pinot Grigio and I just use the, this, these little bottles. Um, and we have capers. And I got my salt and pepper right here. And the other thing that I put into my, my piccata is I have some fresh local butter from the Happy Cow Creamery here in the Greenville, South Carolina area. So those are all the ingredients that we're going to be using for the chicken piccata. My pan is warming up quite nicely. I'm going to turn down the heat because I don't want it too hot to where it's going to burn it right away. You you want your pan hot enough to be able to sear that outside and cook the chicken properly. These are already skinless and boneless, so I don't have to worry about that. The only thing I'm going to need to do at this moment is we're going to take our chicken out. If you feel like rinsing your chicken, please go ahead and rinse your chicken. 
but make sure that you take a paper towel and dab it off to get the excess water off. So what I'm doing is I'm going to spread it out and we're going to put it down. Sorry about that. We're going to put it, dredge it into the flour. Okay, and this is a seasoned flour again. I prefer to use uh, sea salt or you can use kosher salt. I do not use iodized salt in my kitchen. Uh, and I never used it in any of the restaurants I worked at. So you, know, you want to flour it rather generously. And what I'm going to do is get out a, a plate to put it on for now. Shake off the excess and just set it aside for now. I'm going to do that to all three pieces here. And then set them aside on a side plate near my pan. Again, this it just it just takes time, but this is a very simple recipe. And as long as you follow the directions that I'm giving you, it should come out fabulous every time. And you definitely have to season your flour because flour is not seasoned, as you know, it's just very plain. And you got to have some kind of seasoning in there from the start. And then you taste as you go. Okay. Okay, those are all ready to go. So I'm going to move this out of my way. Clean up my counter a little bit here. Let me go wash my hands since I've been touching chicken. Just going to wash my hands a little bit here in my sink. Always, always, always clean up your hands after touching raw chicken or any raw meats. That's that. So, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my pan and any kind of water that I had left on my hands after rinsing off the soap. That's a usual good sign to tell you if your pan is ready. And at the same time, I'm going to turn up my water on my pasta to bring that to a boil. So now I'm just going to take about, I want to say, two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. If you have a gas stove or if you have the coil stoves like I have, I have my heat on medium. Uh, that should be, and the oil is actually smoking right now, so I'll turn my heat down just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my chicken into the pan. And you want to put it down and then go away from you. Don't get too close, too down into the pan and drop it because that will make the oil splash up on you and you will get burned. You need to shift things around a little bit while it's still in the kind of, the pan is kind of warm stage. Actually, it is a hot pan. So just be careful, just use caution. What I do is I'll turn my pan around as well because I know my burner is a little off. Put that into the sink. And what I have here is a pair of tongs. So since the heat went down a little too fast for me, I got my heat turned back up to medium. And we're going to start sauteing the chicken. Again, I want to get it up a little, might want to get it up a little bit higher so that I can um, get a nice crust on the outside so it holds in all the juices to the chicken. Why I will keep turning my pan is because my burner is a little off on center so it, it makes it tilt a little bit and I want everything to be equal. So I'm going to let that go and let that cook for about four minutes four to six minutes on each side on a medium heat 
and watch for splashing like that. Uh, if you have one of those splash screens that, you know, they sell out there, you can be more than happy to go right ahead and put it over it. You don't want to use a lid to the pan because you don't want to have that convection of steam. Uh, the steam will make your chicken more on a chewy side than a tender side. Um, and also you can see here our pasta water is starting to come to a boil. It's a slow boil right now. So we're going to get the pasta ready because as soon as all this chicken starts cooking and then we get it to where we want it. This is, the process will go pretty fast. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to get my caper jar open. Get my capers. Uh, my bottle of Pinot Grigio I have opened. I'm going to put my pasta over here with my pasta pan. And I'm also going to take my Myers lemon and I'm going to cut it in half. Okay? Depending on your, your taste for lemon, and I like a lot of lemon, so I'm going to take the one half, after I get this flipped over, my chicken flipped over, and start it on the other side, I'm going to then squeeze in my lemon, and I'll probably use this whole lemon because, like I said, I love lemon, and I love my pasta, I love my sauces with lemony, um, and it shouldn't be that lemony. I might try out with the half first because the lemon was so big. As you can see in my hand, how big the lemon is. I mean, literally, it's the palm of my hand. Myers lemons are bigger. You get more juice out of them. And just an overall better flavor. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt in here to help with the seasoning, seasoning it just a little more. And a little bit of pepper. Okay, I did turn the pan one more time, and I'm also going to start flipping my chicken over. And as you can see, what I'm talking about, the golden brown color, that is exactly what you want. You want this golden brown color, and you want it to be looking just like it's looking right now. This is going to be a perfect piece of chicken. Uh, it's going to be very tender. It's going to be juicy in the middle. And again, you flip them over. And unfortunately, I have to do this. I'm going to cook it for four to six more minutes on this side. But before that happens, before that gets to the like six minutes, I will be putting in my juice and my lemon. At the same time, I also have my pot of water boiling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pasta cooked off momentarily as well. So it's only been a couple minutes, but you also move your things around too. If you don't want to turn your pan, just move your your pieces of chicken thighs around or chicken breast, depending on your preference and what you like to eat. Like I said, I just prefer to use um, chicken thighs because of the, the it's a better flavor. I just love the flavor a lot more than chicken breast. Even with my fried chicken, I prefer the thighs and legs and wings over the chicken breast because if you ever had it, a lot of times chicken breast fried, even fried, is a bit chewy. What I was doing there is just feeling for the uh, firmness of the chicken. When the chicken is cooked, it's going to be pretty firm. And it's still got a couple more minutes to go. But you don't have to totally cook it thorough. 
in this process, but it's better that you do because once you start putting in your your lemon and your white wine, then that's where you're going to get that kind of like a steam bath in a, in a sense. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some of my pasta. It's just me eating tonight, so I don't need a lot. I'm going to do about this much pasta. I'm going to get that into my water, and you fan it out. Fan out your pasta like this. I know it's sticking up out of the pan and out of the water, but it's not going to matter because it's going to cook. You see how it's starting to fall in by itself? That's because it's getting pliable. And what you want to do is get that going. And what I'm going to do is hold that right there. But also, pasta does not come seasoned. So I'm going to put in a little bit of, of my sea salt to season my water. And you always want to put in your salt when the water is boiling because you set it, you put the water, the salt in the water before the water starts to boil. That salt just sits on the bottom and salt can be an abrasion and can ruin your pans. So wait for your water to come to a boil, get your pasta in, and then put your salt in. So I'm doing this. So that the pasta doesn't turn into one big clump. You want to do that for the first minute or so. And then just watch it from here. Because you're going to want to get back in there and take care of that again. So I'm moving this back a little bit because I'm going to check the other side. I'm going to reflip it back over and check to see where my darkness is and that is beautiful this is a beautiful piece of chicken right there so what I'm going to do with I use a reamer this is a, a, a reamer that you can use for lemons, limes, oranges and these lemons shouldn't have I don't see any seeds but it doesn't mean there's not none in there but you get it into the middle of the lemon and then you twist it and squeeze at the same time And just be careful the steam. If the steam comes up on you like that, just go up, go up here to get out of that steam. And let it settle down a little bit. And finish reaming your lemon there. Squeeze the lemon out. I even will take my lemon and just put it in the pan. I think I will use the other lemon because like I said, I love my chicken. My piccata is lemony. I love the flavor of lemon. And lemon is very good for you. It has a lot of curing agents in it and antioxidants and whatnot. I did see one seed out of that whole lemon. I saw one seed come out. So I'm just going to do my best to get it out. Okay, got the lemon seed out. Now look at the liquid I have from just my lemon, okay? This is what's going to make the sauce in it. And also remember, angel hair does not take long time at all. So keep an eye on it. Check it. <coughs> yeah, about another minute on that. So at this time, I'm going to take the, the white wine. <coughs> you can use a Chardonnay or you can just use Pinot Grigio. I prefer Pinot Grigio because I'm not a big Chardonnay fan. And I'm going to take that wine and I pour it into my pan. I poured about three quarters of the bottle in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that come back up to a boil and reduce a little bit. And what's going to happen? I might put in the rest of the bottle in a few minutes. But what is happening now is because you dredged your chicken and flour, it's got 
it's turning into a sauce because that flour was in the oil which mixes with the oil which turns into a roux so now this is going to make a really really delicious sauce so you just let that sit there and simmer I'm going to probably turn it down just a hair to let it simmer and I might just add the rest of that actually I'm just going to add the rest of that little bottle of Pinot Grigio in because the flour will take all of that liquid and turn it into the piccata sauce so like I said I'm going to let that go for a few minutes and I'm going to stir my pasta and I like my pasta even angel hair al dente so I'm probably right at the point of where I want my pasta so what I'm going to do is take my pasta pan over to the, uh, the sink and I'm going to drain my pasta out. Excuse me, Judge. I put that back on. Let's get most of your water out. And then I'll have this setting right here for me. Because what I'm going to do is any other residual water will drip down into the pan. And this way it doesn't get all over the place. So a couple minutes has have gone by and I still like you see I have the lemon in there the lemon is going to give this more flavor you're going to get the flavor out of the rind of the lemon I would also sit here I'll squeeze it and you got you're going to have we're going to have a really nice sauce here so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our capers to it with the capers, you want to try and keep drain the keep the juice out of it, the brine. It cut capers come in a brine. I mean, the brine's not going to hurt this at all, but I don't want to get too much more liquid into my pasta dish. <coughs> so I'm just going to take some capers. And add them to my piccata. <coughs> All right. So we're just going to let that. Let that cook and reduce for a little bit, and it'll get the caper flavor in there and, and whatnot. You can also take some chicken broth if you have it in-house. I always have chicken broth in my house, so to fortify it and enrich it just a little bit more, I can add a little bit of chicken stock to it. And we're gonna let that we're gonna let that cook into it and cook down. I'm gonna turn up my heat just a little bit. As you can see the, the sauce is more like not a thick gravy. It's like a light light gravy and I can flip these over. So we can get and infuse the lemon and the capers into both sides of the chicken. So, there's that. And the more you let it boil like this and let it cook off, it does get just a tad bit thicker. Not a lot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my plates out, or my plate. And get myself ready for plating. I'm going to use 
this plate here. It's a square bowl that I have. And I love this bowl. I love eating my pasta out of it. I do have this big, huge pasta bowl, but I don't want to look like I'm eating for five because that thing really can hold a lot of pasta. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to shift my chicken over just a little bit here. And I take, I'm going to try and take some of this pasta. I'm going to put it right into the sauce and just flip it a little bit. Take it out and put it right into my bowl. Do it again. Because the way my dog is looking at me, she's looking at me like, excuse me, where's mine? So you just want to toss your pasta into the sauce a little bit. You could just put the whole pasta right in there. If you're going to put this on a big serving platter, then you pull all your pasta out and then place your chicken on the top. So what I'm going to do now is look how much more this has reduced. See what I'm talking about? You get that nice, silky, luscious gravy. Okay, I'm going to turn off my heat. I'm going to get a piece of chicken. I'm going to put it on the top here. Oh, let's just do another piece of chicken. Then I'm going to get my spoon. Get my spoon here. Uh, just be careful, the handle's going to be hot. What we're going to do is I'm going to take the pan and give it a little tilt here. I'm going to get this piece of lemon out. And to get some of the sauce into onto my pasta, I'm going to take a spoon and just go over the pasta. Just like that. I'm going to remove this from the heat, put it in the back there. And then go to the table. Actually, I'm going to get myself a fork because I don't want to try and eat that with my hands. But that's it. That is making a chicken piccata. It's very simple. It took us a whole 27 minutes to do and cook. And there we go. Chicken piccata. Let's see how it tastes. Hopefully I won't have to get up and get any salt. I don't usually use a lot of salt in my diet anyway. But let's give this a try. I'm going to get in there. And... Break up the chicken a little bit. Get a piece of chicken. Oh my gosh. That's perfect. Perfect. That is so good. I don't need any more seasoning really. Some other people would put cheese on this. Some other people would put more salt in it, but I just like the pure taste of the lemon that I have, the white wine that I have in there, and I love the taste of the capers. There's saltiness enough in the capers that you don't need anything more. Mm. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now... If you like this recipe, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I will do my best to get back to you with uh, answers to any questions. If there's anything specific that you would like to see in the future, this is my first video of doing cooking. On my YouTube page Silver Fox Hikes and hopefully if you all enjoyed this one I would really love to do more videos like this and give you tips and little lessons on how to prepare certain dishes
Again, this is Chef Coco. Silver Fox Hikes. See you out there in the kitchen. I'll see you out there on the trail. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again.